Hello and welcome to the Supportive Care Services Live Lunch and Learn series. My name is Von Sell Hunter, Marketing Specialist with Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers. We've created a series of Lunch and Learn videos to help you be successful when navigating your cancer journey. Our Supportive Care Services Department is here to help you get actively involved in your healing process. For more information about the Supportive Care Services Department, please email socialwork at ironwoodcrc.com. Today's featured speaker is Ironwood's lead nurse, Lori Shattuck, and she will discuss frequently asked questions for oncology nurses. Let's all welcome Lori. Thank you, Von Sell, for the introduction. Hi, everybody. My name is Lori Shattuck. I'm with Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers. I've been with Ironwood for nine years now. I'm here to talk to you about most frequently asked questions of oncology nurses. Uh, I went around and I asked all of our oncology nurses, what questions do you get the most? And here's what they came up with. So the first one, um, most common was, how long am I gonna be in the treatment room? You know, every patient comes in and they wanna know how long am I gonna be here? Um, in your education, a lot of the nurses are gonna talk to you about the length of stay, how long you're gonna be here. It is different from patient to patient. Some are here just for um, something very quick and they'll be in just a few minutes to half hour and some treatments are really long, unfortunately. And you're gonna be here all day long. Uh, we should be preparing you that, for that and letting you know how long you'll be here. On your calendars as well, um, it says in treatment room and there's an hour on how long you'll be in the treatment room. Um, but if you're still curious, go ahead and ask us and we'd be happy to let you know what the plan of stay would be. Um, the next one, you know, you come in, you brought, your family brought you, they want to, you want to know, can they come in with me? You know, can I, can I invite them into the treatment room? Unfortunately, right now with COVID, we are trying to limit the number of visitors and the people in our treatment room. And we are asking that all uh, friends, family, visitors that they, you know, that they do not join you. We want to limit the number of people. Um, once we're out of this COVID and we do start welcoming uh, guests back into our treatment room, we want to limit that to one person if possible and no children, nobody under the age of 12. Um, the next one is, you know, you're here. When am I coming back? When's my next treatment? Um, so what happens is your doc, if you've just seen your doctor, your doctor has informed your nurse when they want you to come back. So your doctors looked at them and they give that nurse that plan of care on when they want you to schedule the, that appointment. So your nurse is looking at your treatment plan and we're going up to the next doctor visit to schedule your calendar out again. Um, your treatment regimens normally are the same. You're gonna, so if you receive your treatments every 14 days, then we're gonna schedule you exactly two weeks out. If it's every three weeks, then we're gonna schedule you 21 days out. And that's really not gonna change. It's best to stay on your treatment. When holidays happen, we do move out to the next business day or possibly the following week after that treatment. And that's a discussion with your doctor as to what the best plan of care is for you. Um, we never wanna treat early. Um, that's, that's not the best practice and that's not what we wanna do. Plus your insurance probably wouldn't pay for it. Um, Another great question is, am I getting the same dose that I got last time? A lot of patients wanna know that, they're concerned that maybe they're getting a different dose. So yes, in general, we do um, absolutely, it's the same dose as the last time you got it. Now, if you had some side effects that were um, really bad side effects, your doctor may look at that, you know, your neuropathy and numbness tingling in your hands was really bad. Um, or maybe your blood counts weren't very good, then your doctor may choose to dose down. But um, that's with your doctor talking to you before your treatments, um, your doctor is gonna come up with the, what the best plan is for you. And then when they brought back to the treatment room, you'd be aware that your doctor was dosing down. Another thing that we look at is your body surface area, your height, your weight. Um, if you have lost a significant amount of weight or gained a significant amount of weight, we may be redosing based on that, but your body surface area would need to change by 10%. Um, so a couple pounds probably is not gonna cause us to change your dose at all. 
Um, when should I have my blood work drawn? That's a common question we get as well. So we want the best picture of how you're doing the day you come into the treatment room to let us know, you know, if you're doing well enough to, for treatment. Um, so typically we're gonna ask you to get your blood work one to two days before your treatment. And that gets us the best picture of how you're doing. If you get your blood work done too early and then you get ill in between getting your lab work drawn and coming in, with, that's not gonna be reflective in your lab work. So we want the best picture of how you are that day for your treatment. So one to two days before is best. Um, should I take my normal home medications before coming in? So if you're on blood pe pressure medication, um, yes, please take, take your home medications, take that blood pressure medications before you come in for treatment. We don't want you to hold that. Um, doctors should have a full list. The MAs, when they bring you back, uh, they're asking, you know, has any medications changed? Always really, really important to let us know what medications you're on. Um, if the doctor were to have any concerns at all, he would have that conversation ahead of time with you, but please don't hold your medications prior to coming in. What side effects am I gonna have for my treatment? So this is a very broad question. Um, we should be in your nurse education, we should be telling you all the potential side effects that, that could happen to you. This does not mean that you're gonna get all of the side effects. Uh, some patients do really well in their treatments and they don't have many side effects at all and they're going to come into their treatments and uh, the nurse is going to say, you know, how'd you do? Your doctor is going to ask, how, how did you do? And um, most patients, they're going to tell us, fine, I didn't really have many side effects, maybe a little nausea, no vomiting. Um, and then there's going to be some patients that had the same treatment and they're going to have a really hard time and they're going to tell us all of their possible side effects. Um, we don't know exactly how you're gonna do, unfortunately. We do have a general idea, and in your education, we're gonna prepare you for that. If you have nausea, we're gonna, you know, if we know nausea is probably gonna happen with these treatments, um, we are gonna pre-medicate you with some anti-nausea medications and send you home with some as-needed nausea medication. You don't need to take that anti-nausea meds before coming in for your treatment if they're as-needed. Um, because we are going to give you IV anti-nausea medications. Those are just for home use if they're as needed. Um, but we are going to do our best to try and, you know, help any side effects that may happen. And you can call our office if you have any concerns at all. Um, another frequently asked question is, um, will I lose my hair? now? That one, you know, it really depends on which treatment you are receiving and in your education, again, the nurse should be preparing you. If your side, if your treatment does cause the side effect of losing your hair, I would go ahead and make sure that you're protecting your head in some way. So a scarf, a hat, um, we just want you to protect it from while you're out in the elements. What do I do if I have a fever? Um, we want you to call our office if you're having a fever. So a fever is technically 100.4 or greater. And um, we do want you to call us so we can uh, see how you're doing and check any other side effects and then give you some direction. If you are having a fever right now with COVID, we do not want you coming into our office though. Um, in general, that's just not a good idea with COVID, but we absolutely want to hear about it so we can give you some guidance. Since I'm more prone to infection, should I stay away from my family? Um, we don't want you to completely stay away from your family. We just want you to be smart about it. So, you know, you, you are probably a little bit more prone to some infections with a lot of the treatments that we give you. Uh, good hand washing skills, really, really important. If your family is sick, then that is the time to stay away from them. Um, we just want you to be really, really smart about um, when, when you should be around your family and when you shouldn't, and then just use the precautions um, to be safe about it. But um, family is very important. Uh, can I get a COVID injection or a flu shot? Our CDC guidelines are recommending that um, everybody is getting their COVID vaccines and their flu shots. So our physicians here at Ironwood are promoting that patients are getting them. 
we don't want you to get them done on the days of your treatment. We, um, between treatments is best. And if you are concerned or have any other questions, please call the office and ask one of our triage nurses or your physician when you see them about when the best timing for that injection would be for you. Questions about food and drinks. We get a lot of questions about food and drinks. So should I eat before my treatment? Yes. Um, go ahead and have your breakfast. You don't need to uh, fast before coming in for your treatment. Hydration. Uh, what's the best, um, you know, how much fluid should I be getting in? Um, I, I like to tell my patients that hydration is really, really important. Start the day before your treatment. Um, day before, day out, day after. Those are probably the biggest days to make sure you're getting the most fluid intake. Two and a half liters, which would be um, your average water bottle is about 500 ml, that's half of a liter. So if you drank five of those a day, you'd be getting a good fluid intake. Uh, have one at breakfast, one between breakfast and lunch, one at lunch, one between lunch and dinner, one at dinner time. That's two and a half liters of fluid on top of the other fluids that you're getting from other dietary intakes. So that's a good amount and a good goal. And if you look at it for breaking it up throughout the day, it is pretty achievable. So making sure that you're really well hydrated day before, day of, and day after your treatments is really, really important. Sugar. Um, patients are asking, you know, should I cut out all the sugar in my diet because sugar feeds cancer? Um, well, cutting out the bad sugar is good. Uh, we don't want you, you know, your, your sodas, your cookies in moderation. You don't have to completely cut it out, but in moderation, we should be cutting back on that. But your good sugars, the fructose you get from the bowl of berries in the morning or the lactulose from your, you know, glass of milk, you know, those are good sugars. So you don't have to cut out all sugars in your diet. Um, but cutting out the bad ones that you get um, with your added sugars and your candies and sweets, those kinds of things, that would be pretty, you know, those would be good things to cut out in your diet. Uh, if you have any questions at all, though, about your diet, we also just want to let you know we do have dietitians, Kendra and Kara, on our staff, and they would be happy to talk to you further. Um, good point to also time to also bring up we also have social workers in our offices if, if you need any of those services so, okay the next question am i contagious no oncology hematology patients are not contagious to their friends and families um next one should i drive myself to chemo um your very first treatment we do want a friend or family member to bring you home from treatment if possible. Um, you don't know how you're gonna respond to that treatment. So just the safest practice would be to go ahead and plan a ride home from somebody. If you do okay with that treatment, then going forward, it'd be fine for you to plan to drive yourself home. Um, the next one, how do I know my treatment is working? Um, your doctor is going to um, measure how your treatment is working by your lab work or any potential scans that they may have going. A lot of doctors are going to go ahead and plan scans um, a couple months into your treatment or by your lab work uh, to see how your treatment is working for you. Um, can any nurse give chemotherapy? Um, that's a question that we get. So no. Um, not all RNs can give chemotherapy. So um, in order to give chemotherapy, all of our nurses here, um, when you do have to have an RN degree. And then secondly, our nurses are uh, chemo certified to give uh, the chemotherapies in our offices. Are you always going to be my nurse? Well, um, we have a lot of amazing nurses here at Ironwood, um, but unfortunately, no, we do not assign the same nurse to uh, the same patients again and again. Um, what, what happens is the patient comes into the treatment room and, um, and once it's identified normally by a pink slip that the patient is in the treatment room, the next, next nurse available 
to take that patient is going to pick up that slip and then um, and then they're assigned to that nurse. Uh, we don't play favorites in our in our treatment room. Um, we just take the next available the next patient when the nurse is available. Can I talk on my phone, um, listen to my music, uh, play my laptop or uh, other electronic devices? Uh, we really do want to limit how much you're talking on your phone in the in the treatment room. Unfortunately, we do want to limit those to one to three minutes. Um, there's a lot of people in that treatment room and it can get a little crowded and a little noisy. Uh, someone's trying to sleep next to you and uh, you're having a really engaging conversation with your friends. Um, it can be distracting to others. So we just like to keep a calm environment. As far as music and your laptop goes, um, if you have earphones, that is best for listening to your music because again, we want to avoid those noises in the infusion room and try and keep it a calm environment. And then your laptop, your electronic devices, we have a website um, uh, pass and we have passwords so that you can log on to your electronic devices and use those. I know it can be a long time sometimes in our infusion rooms and a little boring. Um, so yes, bring those in and go ahead, plug in your earbuds and watch a movie or um, whatever, whatever you want to do to keep you busy with those devices. Um, we have questions on when will my next prescription be available to me? So uh, we do ask to give us a few days to fill your prescriptions. Um, we know sometimes patients, you know, they forget to call in and they're calling, you know, I just took my last pill. I need, you know, I need my prescription refilled right now. Um, we do we do need a few days to go ahead and fill them. Uh, we have an internal pharmacy in one of our locations and then we ship them out to all the other uh, locations. So it does take a little bit, a little bit of time to get there. And um, we just, if you could please allow us a few days on filling your prescriptions. Uh, what is the best way to contact my triage nurse? You know, I'm having some concerns. Uh, we, we do have a few numbers to Ironwood, but we want you to call that main line. That's going to get you a hold of the triage nurse uh, the fastest. If you're leaving a message on the doctor's medical assistance line to contact the triage nurse, what you're doing is you're waiting for that MA to pick up that phone listen to her messages and then forward that on to the triage nurse. If you call the main line, you're going to get a live person right away and they're going to start at that point. How urgent is this call? Do I need to get a nurse on the phone right away? Is this a medical emergency? And then live hand off that call or, you know, can I go ahead and transfer this to the nurses? And then the nurses are going to be looking at that and prioritizing their calls and getting those calls back as soon as possible. I will tell you all calls should be returned by the end of the day. And those are the most frequently asked questions of oncology nurses. If you have any questions at all, I urge you to call the office and ask or um, ask your nurse next time you see her. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today for our live Lunch and Learn presentation. Frequently asked questions for oncology nurses featuring lead nurse Lori Shattuck. We hope you enjoyed this session. There will be a replay of this Lunch and Learn on the Ironwood YouTube and social media channels. For more information regarding our supportive care services, classes, and events, email us at wellness at ironwoodcrc.com. Thank you for spending time with us today.